will come back. So let me ask you, we're going to talk about ego death and about spiritual awakening. That what is dying is the life as you know it, the, 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 the delusion of the life as you know it, it is going to disappear. So I would like for you to now, you're ready, you just had a break, you're ready to watch the next part. And I would like for you to close your eyes and breathe. And then ask yourself, do you dare to breathe and see where the breath is taking you? Do you dare, do you dare to go with it without any assumption of what is happening? without any identification of what is happening. I'm not the person that closes my eyes and meditate. I'm not doing that. Well, that's an assumption. That's identification. Or I love to meditate. This is amazing. Well, there you go. Identification. Do you dare to let go of all of that and just breathe and just be? Let go of all assumptions of everything, every single thought you have. Just sit and breathe. Just feel your body. Do you dare to enter in the, into the unknown? Into what you do not know is going to happen? Into that feeling of uncertainty? Can you be in a body that feels uncertain? Can you be in a body that feels concerned? And a little bit rattled about what is happening, what is going on, what is going to happen right now? Can you be in a body where, where that is? Can you see that every single thought you have about uncertainty is just a thought about an assumption? It's not reality. Reality is just that right now you're sitting and breathing and you're present and aware. You're listening to my voice and that's it. So the whole drama that you have created around yourself with what we're going to work with when we say death and ego death, we are going to look at your death too. If you feel uncertain and you feel like shaken in your core, or you feel like something is provoking, it's just thoughts. It's just identification. It's assumptions. It's just thoughts. Breathe and be with that. See where it takes you. And then I would like for you to acknowledge that you're not in control of anything. Absolutely nothing. It's a delusion when we think that there is an agency and there is a, a planning can happen. You know, I can plan that I want to go shopping. I can plan that I want to take a train. I can plan that I want. Are you sure? Are you sure you can do that? Are you sure? Are you in control of anything? A lot of people have had a lots of plans for 2020 and then the pandemic happened. You cannot plan anything. You cannot expect anything. You're completely without control of anything that is happening. Can you be with that? And if you have a thought going like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. That is a delusion. It's part of the delusion. I'm telling you, you're not in control of anything. There's no agency. You can have a lot of thoughts about things. You can identify with a lot of things. You can have a lot of expect expectations and opinions. None of it is happening. None of it's true. And you cannot expect of any of it to happen. So can you acknowledge that you are in control of absolutely nothing? <laughs> Ever. You can't be. If you feel that something welding up in you, it's good. Be curious. What's that? What's that about? It tickles your fear of death. The ego is afraid of dying right now. That's okay. That's okay. So whenever you catch yourself in the thought that you can plan anything into the future, then be aware that that is just a thought. You can't plan anything. Do you know that time I've talked about a couple of times that when you were when you are in just being, when there's no time and there's no space, there's no dimensions, there's just pure being, all of us have experienced it in some small glimpses for some of us. For those, it's like where we are. <laughs> but 
Anyway, that point where there's no time or anything, when you, if you really think about it, if you really reflect on about that right now, do you see that planning into the future seems completely ridiculous? Because when you are in that flow, time doesn't exist. Time stands still. There's no time. It's like that all, all the time. All the time. It's not only glimpses. It's like that all the time. So when you are in the delusion that you have control of anything and that you can plan into the future, you can't. You just tag along with what, <laughs> what the meat suit is, is going on, it, it, what is happening. You just tag along in what is happening for the meat suit. That's it. That's it. And that gives you a huge freedom because there's no identifying, there's no expectation and there's just freedom to be with what is. So when you catch yourself in the illusion that you can plan into the future, then be open to the fact that that is only thoughts and hopeful wishes, nothing else. In the third lesson, I talked about expectations and that expectations are always tied into victimhood. Do you see that? Are you completely clear on that? That every time you have an expectation about something, you have just made yourself a victim. You expect something to happen. When that doesn't happen, you, you think it's somebody doing something against you or, or circumstance being against you. So you're a victim. As soon as you have an expectation, you, you need to be curious. Look at where is the victim in this right now. So the insight into expectation was realizing that for every expectation you have, you, are, you see yourself as a victim. That is super unpleasant. That's super unpleasant. We don't want that. We don't want that. And on one level, it can be super scary to see that the only thing you can actually be sure of is that there's nothing to be sure of. It's all uncertainty. There's no control. It's all uncertainty. And that can be super scary. So just breathe with that. Can you be brave and be with that? So when you let go of life as you know it, your assumptions of life as you know it, the assumption of you being in control of anything, of being able to plan anything, when you let go of that, everything is different. Nothing has changed. And it's what is said that mountains will still be mountains and rivers will, will still be rivers. Everything is different. And yet everything is exactly the same. And the reason why this triggers the ego so much is that we open, we are opening a door into the insight that that is exactly how it's going to be when you die. When you're non, no longer here on this planet, when you die. That is exactly how it's going to be. Nothing is going to be different at all. Mountains will still be mountains. Rivers will still be rivers. The people you love and care about, they will go on. They will move on. You will be missed for a period and then they will start to forget you. They will have longer and longer periods where they don't even think of you. The ego does not like that. And that is why this is so provocative. Because we want to be significant. We want to have meaning and purpose, planning. We want there to be purpose with our lives, you know. Have a meaning with our lives. And realizing that, well, there isn't really. <laughs> mountains will still be mountains when you're not here. Rivers will still be rivers when you're not here. Everything will go on without you. The ego does not like that. And it's also why one of the most, um, I think one of the most significant meditations that I did when I was young was, was the rotting corpse. And it's a meditation that is really, really difficult to do when the ego is active. So there's no point in you doing it. There's no point in you being forceful about it. Um, if it doesn't feel right to do it, then don't do it. And if you want to try it, then you try it. It's basically that you sit down 
and you start your meditation and you imagine that you sit next to your dead body. You just died, the body's still warm, and you're sitting next to it. And then you let time go on while you sit and meditate next to your dead body. So the body starts to go cold, rigor mortis sets in, and then the whole rotting process starts with larvae, flies, and the whole dissolving process. Um, and it ends up with you just being completely dissolved, turning into salt. That's basically what you are, salt. And for me doing that meditation, I, I was quite young when I did it, it really changed. It was very provocative in the beginning. Uh, I was still tied into ego. I, I still believed. It was for, before my awakening, so I still believed someone to be there. But then I got cancer. And this exercise or this meditation changed uh, very much for that. Um, I had malignant melanoma and I got four months. They gave me four months left to live. So doing this meditation was, I think at the moment I, at, when I started to do it, it was about preparing me for what was going to happen and be when I then stopped my meditation and came back to my, my young son, my son who was just born, um, and coming back to that life, then I would be more present and more aware. That was, that was the purpose of doing it. And I knew the meditation from, from beforehand. It just never really worked for me. And it really, really worked for me, knowing that I was going to die. And then I um, I read somewhere in, in all the literature that I was chewing through to find out a way to, to cure myself for cancer. I read a sentence where it said that 80% of all people that get cancer dies. 100% of all people dies. And that really, that clicked for me. That made me realize that I was not dying more than anybody else. And who knows if I'm going to die of cancer. I could be hit by a bus before I die of cancer. So having a diagnosis like that is one thing. A prognosis, completely different. Completely different. And doing the meditation really helped me in seeing, seeing through self, really understanding that that assumptions is one thing. So the meditation about the rotting corpse is really good. You don't need to force it. If it if it doesn't feel comfortable or you don't want to do it, then don't do it. Um, there are lots of other things you can do. It's just one meditation or one reflection that is really useful in becoming aware of the ego. Because the ego cannot imagine a world without you in it. Your ego cannot see the world continuing after you're dead. It's also why when you, when you dream, and um, you never die in a dream, because the ego cannot fathom <laughs> that, that to be possible. That can't be. So really working with the, with the sense of control, with the need of control that the ego has, it's, it's really, really good in, in dissolving the ego and the assumptions of the ego. The next thing I would like to talk about is um, part of what I talked about in the last lesson. And it's about, it's about the selfing. It's about that in every experience you have, the selfing and the ego has a preference, something it wants or something it doesn't want. Now, when we get to the fourth fetter that is about desire, all the things you want and ill will, all the things you don't want, we're working with this in more depth, obviously. But in my experience, it's really important to, to have this, um, this awareness in your being right now. And it's what I call the joy of experiencing. Because with every single experience that you have, you can find the joy of experiencing. Now, the selfing and the ego does not want to do this exercise <laughs> because it is dissolving the ego. The more you go into the space, 
where you have a joy of experiencing, the more the ego is dissolving. Because the ego always wants something else. The ego is never content and the ego is never in the now. The ego is always in the future with all the things it's expect expecting is going to happen or it's ruminating about the past with all the regrets that you have. So practicing the joy of experiencing is it's basically impossible for the ego. And it's a great way for you to like we talked about in the last lesson you know, when when all the 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 non-duality people and all the people that are further along in the feather work where i said that uh, you have the thought you 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 bang your toe or you walk into a door or something you have the thought of i'm clumsy and then you have the the, ne the first thought you can make is thinking i'm so much more remember that that one when you're there, what I would like for you to exchange now with the thought of I'm so much more, I would like for you to change that awareness into a joy of experiencing. So yes, I'm saying when you bang your toe, find the joy of experiencing. Find the, the let's say you bang your, your toe. Go in, instead of just cussing and jumping around and being angry and I'm so clumsy and you're removing yourself from the situation. I would like for you to find the joy of experiencing. Find the joy of the pain in your toe. Feel how that the pain in the toe is not the same. Every single second, the pain is changing. It's not one pain. It's never one pain. The same when you have migraine or you have body pain or you are having a root canal or whatever is going on, whatever painful that is happening, we assume, the mind assume it to be one pain, like same flavor all the way through. It's not. It's not. Just like every single inhalation is different than the, uh, than the next inhalation. And every part of the inhalation is different than the part that, that just was. You can try it now. Inhale if you make an inhalation. There's no part of that inhalation that is the same all the way through the inhalation. The same with the exhalation. You can do that now. You exhale. There's no part of that exhalation being the same all the way through the exhalation. Because nothing stays the same ever. Ever. Everything is changing all the time. And if you, have, if you bang your toe... You're gonna and you really have awareness in the joy of experiencing. You're gonna experience that the pain in the toe is changing all the time. Then it might be sharp, then it might be more rounded, then it's up to the knee, then it's in the stomach, you get nauseated, then it's it's moving around all the time. That can be joyous. I'm not talking about pain being joyous, I'm not in sadomasochism or any of that. It's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about the assumptions that you have of something being in a certain way, like banging your toe, that's painful, don't want to do it, I have a preference for not banging my toe. That's an assumption. Because banging your toe and having a focus on the joy of experiencing might be what is needed for you to become awake. Who are we to know? Who are you to know? You can never have a pre preference towards anything. Because if you have a preference, then you're removing you from the opposite. First of all, you're putting it into a dualism, you know, and you're removing it to the opportunity that is the new experience. I'm not saying that you should go and bang your toe on purpose right now. I'm not saying that you should do, you know, silly things just to experience it. Well, you can do, it's still silly. You don't even have to. You can sit and look into a wall, you know, for nine years. And have a completely different experience every single second. Because that is the awareness, you know. And the, the, the joy of experiencing is there all the time. You're just not aware of it. You're not focusing on it. It's there anyway. And you can point your awareness and your attention towards that. So no matter what is happening... No matter who is cutting in front of you in traffic or stealing your cucumber from your cart or 
arguing with you, commenting, uh, using a wrong pronoun, uh, whatever's happening. I'm not saying that anything is right or wrong. Please understand, it's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you pulling yourself up from the assumption and the locked into egoness that is happening. And then you have a joy of experiencing. So you find out the how the experience is constantly changing. It's also why I remember when I gave the assignment with not having any screen time for six months. If you choose to do that, then you can actively work with the joy of experiencing because just sitting and being, just sitting and and being present with what is, there is a joy of experiencing in every single second and everything is changing all the time. Life is so full, you know, of experiences and we're just not aware. It is so beautiful and it is so magnificent what is unfolding that the joy of experiencing is really putting you in awe of what is happening. And the thing with joy of experiencing is also that when there's no longer any judge into something being good or bad, so a headache is not a bad thing, Um, a breakup is not a bad thing, um death sentence a diagnosis uh infertility it's not a bad thing when we when it feels like a bad thing then we have an insight into assumption and into identification and when you focus on the joy of experience then you will see that there's only experience happening There's no good or bad things happening. There's just experiences. And the joy of experience is always there. Even when it's unpleasant. Then the joy of experience is still there. The experience can still be joyful. Even though it's a very unpleasant experience. So experiencing dissolves any hooks that you have into a preference of a situation. And it's very useful for... All the situation in, in your life where there's no choice, when when you can't choose to do one thing or the other, when you need to do your taxes, you know, there's no choice, you need to do that. So instead of having uh, grudging to do it and don't want to do it, then find the joy of experiencing not wanting to do the taxes. Because it is happening all the time. That joy of experience is happening all the time. And you're not tied into a thing being in a certain way. It just is. So it's it's great for all the big stuff. But it's also great for all the small stuff. Just, just being aware that the joy of experience is dissolving selfing right away. Right away. Ego death is happening right away. You're very, very clear about right now that there's a selfing... There's a putting a self in the center and there's an assumption that, that you can be planning, you can be avoiding, you can be preferring, you can be, be doing lots of different things. And the most obvious thing to do is asking who is planning, who is preferring, who is avoiding, you know. And when you experience that, then why are you taking yourself so seriously? But the self thing is about that. It's always taking itself into the center of attention and you're never in anyone's center of attention ever and in reality in reality when you are in the joy of experience there's not even a center of of attention either there's there's no selfing you know there's just the joy of experience so i'm beginning to see that your identity and what you think you're identifying with is just what you think you are is not who you are at all. Do you see that? So you can also bring awareness into how expectations always are tied into that delusion of time. Can there ever be planning? Can there ever be avoiding? Can there ever be expectations? 
Can anything ever be taken seriously? Is there anything to fear? And this is where it's a good idea to feel into reality and become aware of gaslighting, the spiritual bypassing. Because when you understand that identification is created by thought, by the ego, then the ego tends to run towards whatever I feel has no meaning. There's no me. The ego tends to do that. And that is when you're identifying with the non-identifying. The ego has, is, is, is playing a trick on you. And again, it's love and compassion and kindness. It's all that is needed, not gaslighting. So a thing I really would like for you to do after this lesson is to find the joy of experience. Finding into, into enjoying what is happening. Not the topic of what is happening, but the enjoyment of the experience of it happening. Which means that there can never be ha nothing can ever happen that you don't want to happen. Because everything is an experience. And you can find the joy of the experience in no matter what is happening. I would like for you to look into that. Feel into reality about that. And see how every single thought you have is always about something. And by that, when you have a thought about something, you are pulling yourself out of, of what actually is. Yeah, look into that. So there's a huge difference between um, experience uh, and perception. Direct experience is what you are experiencing without you adding a label of any kind. And this is another thing I would like for you to be aware of after this lesson. It's the direct experience. Because with the, the, the direct experience, you're not adding any kind of label. So a direct experience, for example, is me sitting here right now. There's no label on the sun shining in or me feeling nice and warm or me feeling content or happy. All those labels are gone. It's just the direct experience is what in Buddhism is called Vedana. So it's when you have... Um, an experience of pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. It is what is happening before you put the label on describing what is pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. It is before that. And I would like for you to play with that. Because, as I said, the thought, the, the, the thought is always thinking about something. And when you're sitting and practicing the Vedana, practicing what is pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. That is the joy of experiencing, you know? That is you getting into that. And you can have a joy in experiencing pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. What is describing what is pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral, then you're already in thought. You have already passed over, uh, jumped over the gap, and you're not with the direct experience of what actually is. And I would like for you to, to practice that as well. So see if you can kind of zoom out of the labels of what is happening and just be with what is happening. So it's pleasant, unpleasant or neutral. It's not the label of why, it's just the being. Yeah. So no interpretation of what or how. No judgment or preference at all. There's not even a word to describe it. The, the, the practicing of the Vedana is um, it's really good to become aware of how much the ego is always putting a label on things. The thoughts are is always about something. So the ego is always thinking about something and it always has a preference. Or it's always describing what is happening, what is there. So it's, and it's always dualistic. It's always in what is or what isn't. So everything that is, that is dual is tied in with the ego, with, with what the I am not, I should be. There's always a preference towards something. What might seem like a body experience is often just perception of, of what is going on. 
which means that it's mind created. It, right, wrong, it can be correct, or you can condemn what is what it is, or you can interpret what it is, um, and you and you put a label on it. And that is not Vedana. That is not Vedana. That's ego. That's ego. Another thing I would like for you to do after this lesson is to seek silence. I I mentioned it before. Because seeking silence is really important in becoming present and aware. You cannot experience everything that is going on and not having time off to for the mind to settle in and to digest what, what, what is happening. Um, and that is only happening in silence. And it's also about not, not being with other people. Because... When you're with other people, you are always, other people are looking at you and interpreting you. And that is reflected back in you. We're doing that ping pong bounce with the mirror neurons that is happening. Which means that when you're with other people, there's never silence. And that can be super useful. If you, if you, have, if you have a friend or a loved one where you can... Um, how can I say it? Mirror one another in a way with silence and you're kind of like bouncing the energy on and off one another and it's kind of like expanding. I had a really nice experience now when I was in Denmark. I was walking with a friend um, uh, in the forest and, and it was just this beautiful experience of of energy bouncing. Um, we were meditating uh and doing an exercise that I'm going to show you later on. Uh, and we're meditating together and we had that beautiful experience of, of energy bouncing and, uh, and expanding. But it needs to happen in silence. And it needs to be with somebody that, that you're equal with. Um, yes. I think if I'm saying more about that, I'm digging a grave. I don't want to jump in right at this point. I'm getting back to this at a later point. Yeah, yeah. What I want to say is that when you're with others, you're often being told, unverbally, without any ver without any words, being told who you are. Um, when I used to have groups um, in Denmark, I, I always made sure that there was not um, couples in the same session that they were on the, in different sessions S siblings not in the same session but in different set settings because you when you're with family or friends you are all the time being told who you are and there's no space for you to expand into into who you actually are now um, so seek silence and see if you can sit in silence and be with the joy of experiencing if you're only doing one thing, no, I want you to be curious. That's a thing. But then another thing is is the thing about um, seeking silence and sitting with joy of experiencing. So the awareness I would like for you to have after this lesson is be curious. I would like for you to question everything and ask yourself if you're caught in any kind of arrogance of believing that you are there are you identifying with not identifying? Are you caught up in a belief or a dogma of a right way to do this? Are you free to be with what is actually happening? Or are you caught in a dogma or a right way to do it? And is there somewhere to go? Can you be anywhere but right here? Is there somewhere to go? Are you okay with not having any kind of control? And do you see that you can never, ever control or plan anything? And then I would like for you to be with the joy of experiencing, no matter what you experience. Find the joy of experiencing. And lastly, seek silence. Choose silence. Choose quiet, solitude and silence. And that's it for now. Thank you.